So I stress it, especially those in the Christian community to please take the time to truly embrace yourself, know yourself, know what you want, know what you what, know what you don't want and allow God to truly permeate your soul and your spirit so that you can develop and mature and be who God has called and ordained you to be. Because when you get into a relationship with somebody, first of all, there should be purpose. Now, one of the mistakes that I have done, and I'm going to be woman enough to say it, is that I silence the voice of God to appease my flesh. And what I mean by that is that I, I I did hear God saying, wait a minute, slow it down. But no, but because of fear and a fear of being alone, I said, you know what? Let me just go ahead and do this thing. So that caused me to go ahead of God. Now for women, and I'm going to touch my women a little bit. I love you dearly. But sister girl, if you truly are not ready to submit, if you truly are not ready to allow the man to lead, if you truly are not ready to cater, listen to what I'm saying now. If you are not ready to, 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 to reverence your, your spouse, your, your soon to be husband or husband, then I'm going to need you to get it together before you say I do. Because let me tell you something, you can have the, you can have the most beautiful hydrangeas, the most beautiful flower arrangement. Your dress can be off the chain. Your bridesmaids are with you and your, your decorations from the altar to the reception is lit. But at the end of the day, that is for one night, one night. So you really have to think about what is it that you are really looking for? Are you just looking for the wedding or you just truly want a marriage because there is a difference in the two. And one of the things uh, when it comes to marriage, I don't care what nobody tell me. Submission is not a form of dictatorship. No. So as women, we need to get that out our head just because we are to submit to our, our, our husband as the head. It doesn't mean that it is a dictatorship. No, it's just reverence because we have to submit one to another because it's two becoming one. And so listen, it's not a form of dictatorship. But if you're not sound, if you're not ready, or if you feel like you have to be honest with yourself as far as, am I ready to submit? Am I ready to cater? Am I ready to go through thick and thin? Am I truly ready? Because for better or for worse, and these are the vows. And the reason I do want to stress this is because I do not want you to make the same mistake that I have made. We, You do not want to go ahead of God. This is why I'm really stressing that in your singleness, you truly take the time to develop your relationship with God, cultivate a profound relationship with God. Know him for yourself. Speak to him and allow him to minister to you. And for my fellas, men of God, and I'm talking to saved or unsaved, if you are going to take a woman to be your wife, be ready to provide. Because the word of God says, the man leaves his mother and his father and cleaves to his wife. And just as women are told on a daily basis to know your worth, I need men to understand their worth as well. So in your singleness, take the time to know your worth. Because you are not a nigga, you are not a vacabone. You are not any of those because you are a king. You were called to rule and you were called to reign. So I, I encourage you to take the time to allow God to permeate your soul and your spirit and know your identity, know your purpose, know your vision, know your work. Be in your work before you say, I do. Because the one thing you do not want to do as a man 
is to take this woman, somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, somebody's auntie, and take her and not and not provide for her. Yes, you will go through thick and thin. Yes, you will go through some seasons of lack. And yes, you will go through some seasons of overflow. But you do not want to take her and, and you go nowhere. It's as if the complete relationship is in the wilderness. And the problem that we have in today's society, we are allowing our emotions and our body and our heat to make decisions for us. And we're not being led by the Holy Spirit and we are not being in spirit and in truth. And we're silencing the voice of God for the sake of your fleshly desires. And what happens is we don't take our time to establish a friendship with that individual. We don't take the time to understand that individual. We don't take the time to know their strengths and their weakness for that individual. We don't take the time to say, hey, are you truly going to have my back through thick and thin? Are you really going to go? Are you really going to be there for me for better or for worse? Because what happens when my pockets hit zero dollars? Are you going to buck it on me? Hello, somebody. You got to take your time. Like, are you, are you dating with purpose? Are you with me for purpose? Can we come together and put our plans together and really elevate in life? Because we do not do, we're not taking our time. It's boom, you this, boom, you're my husband, boom, you're my wife, boom, we get married, boom, then you divorce because why? There was no type of foundation. Man of God, woman of God, saved or unsaved. This is what's going on in the world. And like I said, I want to see the divorce rate, especially in the Christian community, to go down drastically because we are not taking our time to establish a relationship. We are not allowing God to lead us and we are not allowing God, you know, to, to show us because he is Alpha and Omega and he declares the end at the beginning. Let's keep it real. Praise the Lord, somebody. So, but I, and, and in my book, I truly, I truly, truly, truly do stress the fact of, you know, knowing who you are and taking that time to allow God, you know, to work. So whenever you get a chance, be sure to check it out. You can get it on Amazon or you can DM me, PM me, send me a private message to get a signed copy via me. But my book is called A Praying Wife, My Tears to Deliverance. And it is, as I stated before, it is my testimony as far as what I had to deal with. And because another thing that we are not doing is we are not allowing ourselves to truly be healed from previous relationships. We are not, we are not doing this. We, we're not, we just, we get out of one relationship and then we jump into another one, but, but, our, but there's still a soul tie. There's still a connection. That person is still dwelling in your heart. You're still carrying that anger. You're still carrying that hurt. And then you get into another relationship with somebody else and now complete, not allowing yourself to heal completely. And then you're trying to figure out why is this relationship rocky? Because you're too busy looking at what the past person did and looking to see if they did it. And then you, you're so tense and you're so focused that that you, you don't understand the pressure that you are putting on that individual. Another reason why we're not having successful relationship is because every individual have this fantasy man or woman in their mind that the natural that when somebody do come into your life that this fantasy person is so high up there that automatically when somebody is interested in you they do not meet the standards. Or they're nowhere near it because of this fantasy person in your mind. But you have to understand that no matter, I don't care how much money you got in the bank. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how sanctified you are. Let's keep it real now, people. Let's keep it real. At the end of the day, everybody comes with a baggage. And at the end of the day, when you take your time to get to know that person, then you can, then you can decide, am I able to, to deal with the baggage that you are coming with or not? But we jump in head first and then when we see the baggages, then we want to back up and be like, hold up, slow up, wait a minute. I wasn't ready for this. 
But whose fault is that? You jump head first. You didn't look. You didn't discern. You allowed your flesh to speak. So I encourage you, and I and I don't know how many times I'm going to say this, but I truly encourage you to truly take the time to know who you are. Take the time to truly allow yourself to heal emotionally, heal mentally, heal spiritually, even heal financially. Because if our emotions is out of whack or you suffering from depression and loneliness, let's be honest, it, deal, it, 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 it trickles in into your finances, then your finances start looking funny. So, but it's your girl, Elda. Um, I pray that this has encouraged you one way or another. If you definitely do want me to expand on it, feel free to send me a message. Don't forget, thumbs up, like, share, share with anybody you feel that may benefit from this. I know it's very short, but I didn't want to make a long, you know, video because we live in a popcorn society, let's be honest. But if you definitely do want me to expand on it, I will be glad to do so. And if you do have any questions, you can check out my email below and I'll be I'll be glad to do a QA 